Reap. Can you hear it? Welcome to Relay. Season's greetings and merry merrymas. Twas two nights before the night upon which all knights are knighted nightly, when on the night of the knighting, knighted knight Nishkara knelt knowingly near noble knight Shiver. Sup, homie, noble knight Shiver said nobly. But hark, what sound through computer speakers breaks, said Nakara. Ah, it's Eris, it's Relay Station, I'm done with this shit, let's go. I'll do. Um... Okay, louder. Louder. Let's see how that goes. Uh, Jake. Jake uh, decided to have a power outage right before we start started. So, uh, more like more like the town he lives in in Texas had decided to have a power outage. <laughs> true. I don't really think it's it's his fault, but um, Shiver, uh, that's that's a really uh, impressive green screen you've got behind you. It's not bad, is it? It's it's very, it's almost realistic. Very it likely. is. Yeah. But n no one in their right mind would ever build a house out of paper and wood. No, uh, that's... Except a pig. Yeah. He, he might blow down too easily. <laughs> um, I see that Miles uh, subscribed with t Twitch, pr titch, titch Twime. Uh, Twitch I'm, Twime. I'm in, a, I'm in a speaking <laughs> mood today. Um... So, uh, in in thanking out in thanking uh, Miles with a wave, I'm also going to uh, show off to everyone my newly acquired Christmas sweater. Uh, Your Christmas sweater is amazing, which I love like so okay. much. What's a Sam? What's a Sam? A Sam. Yeah. A Sam. Yes. A N. No, a backwards S. A backwards N. A five A N. Backwards N. Uh, I actually. <laughs> uh, I didn't actually acquire this sweater. Um, Cass found it in an outing to the mall. So apparently, it came from Urban Planet. Uh, it's some Urban kind of, Planet. Some well, I don't of, care. Good, good on you, Urban Planet. Merry Christmas, Stephen Madman. Woo! Thank you. Oh, even better, it was half off. I'm I'm so happy with this Christmas sweater right now. What you mean? It hasn't got anything on the back. Yeah, yeah, no. Naked from. Naked on the back. Yeah. You know, like assless chaps. Yeah, this is like a backless shirt. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny because uh, for I got him. I got him. Look at look. I got him. Sure is dying, and it's funny because he can't die. He can't laugh out loud because he'll wake people up. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. You Nothing know bad happened in there at all. <laughs> <laughs> so for the past like thirty three years of my life, I've never owned a, a like Christmas sweater. Uh, last year, Cass got me one, but the last one, it was the only one she could find. It was the last one the store had, and it was a woman's Christmas sweater, so it was like this on me. <laughs> and it looked a little ridiculous when I was wearing it, but I did it anyway for the spirit of the season. And now this year, I have this wonderful thing, and upstairs I've got another one. It's a Legend of Zelda uh, Christmas sweater. I think... I think we need to see the 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 plunging V. Uh. <laughs> I mean, I could go get it. Oh, no, show us a little bit of skin. I could model. I could model for you all of my Christmas sweaters. If that's really the kind of mood we're in, oh, uh, that's what this podcast is all about. <laughs> uh, let me. Oh my. <laughs> Sorry, folks. <clears throat> <laughs> I 
Um, Terms of service. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, only Jake knows about that TOS crap. I don't pay any attention. And he's not here. <laughs> so I can do whatever we want. Um, oh, man. It's so true. Vegetable rights and peace. Vegetable juice is murder. V8 is a real crime. Yes. Don't think that cabbage doesn't have feelings. Uh, wait, no. Don't you, think you got that they this. Don't Come on, man. Don't think that they don't have feelings just because a cabbage can't scream. I have heard the screams, the screams of the vegetables watching their skins being being peeled, grated, to grated and steamed with no mercy. <laughs> How do you how do you knew, think that that feels? I knew a bad lettuce once, but in the end, it's all right because he turned over a new leaf. <sighs> Had uh, a vote in Brexit as well. He voted. Well, we know what he voted to remain. Oh, oh, it's oh. oh. amazing. I love it. Um, <clears throat> okay, everyone. Uh, I assume that you're all here for exactly what you've just experienced. Talk of uh, veggies and Christmas sweaters. Um, no other possible reason. Yeah. Hi, welcome to the Relay Station. Yeah. This is us. This is us. How was everyone's week? Actually, you know what? Hey, hold the phone. I think that I'm actually wearing that other Christmas sweater in the shit the goddamn picture down there. Oh, re oh really? I think that that's the other Christmas sweater that I was wearing. Yeah. The plunging V? It's just, it's really, like, it's a really wide collar. Yeah. Anyway. Just, uh, just notice that. So, um, it's, it's like, it's almost Christmas. Um, mm -hmm. There has been no Christmas live stream from CIG this year. Uh, and for that, for that, we are all eternally thankful. Um, Sorry, CIG. <laughs> uh, but you know what, Nakara? Let's, uh, let's start off with a... Uh, this is probably going to be our last show of the year. Yeah. Uh, the, next, the next show would be on the 28th of December... But uh, we're going to take some time off and rest and, you know, spend time with family yeah. over the Christmas holidays. So uh, we'll likely come back. And, yeah, like Shiver says. Uh, so as our last show of, of the year, um, Nakara, how how have uh, CIG done? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's put, I'll put it this way. They, are, they still are selling the Aries, I believe. I checked yesterday and they still were. Um, and they have the holiday sale on, which is going quite well. And they're already at $43.8 million, which is like $6 million more than they've ever made before. Um, considering that their yearly revenue has normally not varied much at all, like it's been, you know, 30, I think the range is like 33 to 37. Like, yeah. Year over year. Um going out they're probably going to finish the year at about 45 which is the upper range of even my like late like i i sort of made an estimate near the end of the sale there the the ia sale um but yeah they're doing spectacularly well they're making like 150 to 200 grand a day right now so uh do I we know what like those to know. Oh. <clears throat> I, I would like to know you know it the reason that's bringing people in is it is it the promises of what's coming or is it what cig have delivered so far or is it a mix of the two I, I know we'll never really know but i'd be intrigued to know what it is that's bringing all the money in constantly especially this year that's raised it i think 3.8 is really helping um it, there's been a bunch of press about 3.8 it's very pretty so it works really well for um articles and stuff yeah uh, they've also made the game a lot more playable in 3.8. You know, you have multiple places you can spawn. They decreased quantum times. Um, like, you can spawn where you want to play, and then they also decrease quantum times. So, Oh, um, you mean they made it playable as a game? Yes. Um, so, you know, I, I think that it's getting a lot of good press right now, so I think that helps, but I think it's really mostly that 
Um, my feeling is that a lot of the entire player base is engaged again because Citizen Con went so well. And um, also because 3.8 is going well. So I, I think that a lot of people... And they got socks out! Yeah, we got well, socks for Christmas. Socks and even the limited persistence that we're getting makes a huge difference. Finally, if CIG are like, yeah, you know what? Things like the ships you buy and the money you earn in game will will persist over patches. All of a sudden, that gives a lot of people who were like, what's the point in me playing? It's just going to go away every patch, right? People mm -hmm. who want to people who want progression this this patch finally gives them at least the possibility of that progression and i think for a lot of people uh that kind of progression is supremely important i agree and i i, I really like that they're still working on the progression thing because i think it's important um uh yeah let me I think getting the uh, what they they call the eye cash in will really sort of seal the deal for people being able to progress. I know there's there I've I haven't read most of them, but I've seen a couple of articles about three point eight two. I know massively mm -hmm. op did it. Um, massively op was super negative, but they always are. They are, but they still have an it's mm -hmm. it's the whole. There was a, more to the point. There was a Newsweek article which was an interview with Sean Tracy about 3.8 and, and specifically uh, server-side OCS <laughs> of all freaking things. <laughs> it's getting out to a wider market. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what they're doing is genuinely impressive, though. So I can... I don't know. I, I guess I can imagine it being more more talked about in things that aren't just gaming specific soon as well. Cause I know Forbes for whatever reason has one guy on their staff who's nuts about borderlands three. And he has like, <laughs> he, he has like two or three articles a week about borderlands three in Forbes. And it's like, interesting. It doesn't really seem to fit, but I read his, I read his articles because he's not. Honestly, a lot of those outlets are just doing oh, whatever they can. Come on, Nightbot. It. Is Nightbot Sorry. being a jerk? Nightbot is being such a jerk. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Must have been like one second late. Sorry about that. Um. Yeah, I think I think that a lot of those sites now are just kind of do whatever, doing whatever they can to get clicks. And if people are clicking on their Borderlands art, Borderlands articles, then they'll keep putting them out. Also, it really helps to have somebody in your staff who actually can write about it competently. Yes, <clears throat> but I'd I'd rather read about it from something like Forbes than from I don't know. I I have so much against so many of the video game newsmakers at this point it it's uh, spe speaking of someone who's fucking old it's ch the industry has changed a lot back in the day back way in the day when you used to load a game on a cassette tape now for those of you who were born before <laughs> 1990 that's a piece of plastic with another <laughs> bit of reeled plastic that goes from one end to the other and takes about an hour to load and back in those days people were encouraged to copy your game and share it because it's like you know, it, it was it was a community. The whole thing. You play a game. I've made a game. Share it out. And now it's very much not like that. It is now definitely an industry. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's one the of the biggest now. Biggest industry in the world, just about. It's bigger than well, film and well, like it's, it's, it's entertainment. Of yeah. Yes. But it's still one of the least respected out of all. Yes. Of them. I agree. Video games aren't art, apparently officially they're not art but, but fuck that <laughs> like there's so yeah, the, it, the number of games you can list off as no this this is art is just i mean e even flower. a shitty game e even oh, a flower. shitty game as long as someone who made it has pumped their heart and soul into it and when they were doing it it was a labor of love 
that, that's something. Even if it's a shitty game, that's a lot of effort. But someone loved that game, and it's turned out shit. But it's still, you know, it's mm-hmm. still a baby that someone loved. Yeah, like my There's, parents. Uh, as as a ostensibly as ostensibly a writer, um, <laughs> oh, one of the things sure. that I see. One of the things I see lots of other writing people saying is uh, it doesn't matter if you're published. As long as you are writing and are trying to write, then you are a writer. Mm -hmm. I don't know. As you've made it, you've made something. It's art, period. And and it it doesn't matter who you are, even if you've made a shitty, shitty game. And you know who I'm talking about. Me? Yes. Of love in there. They've. No, you know, <laughs> someone has sat there and he really wanted to make something that was really good and whether or not he failed or succeeded he tried yeah art thing is or she. art art is subjective you're right miles art is 100 percent subjective but the what is subjective is whether or not you resonate with that art whether or not you appreciate that art or it means something to you what is not subjective is the fact that it is still art i personally uh find the entire idea of a banana taped to a wall with duct tape to be bullshit but someone ate the banana yeah but someone also paid more for that banana than i'll ever earn in one transaction in my entire life um because it's art because someone valued it as art so Um, yeah. I mean, we deserve to be re- remembered for the buck, the buck tape banana. The I, human, human race will not be remembered for duct tape bananas. <laughs> it's not something you can find in an archaeological record. <laughs> Yet. Um. Anyway, so let's let's get how back many on. how many duct tape bananas do you need to preserve them in an archaeological record? Oh wait, is he not up? Is he not up and running? I thought he was up and running. Did you give the bot Christmas holiday already? I damn well didn't. Get to work, bot. I'm working on it. Uh, so so. They've done well. They have done well this year. Right? Oh, yeah. The best year they've ever had. By a lot. <clears throat> and people keep saying they're going to... This is the year they're going down. Nope. <laughs> Try again. <clears throat> Wait, is that... This. Sorry, I'm trying to get the bot working. <laughs> yeah, Tofu. Must be next year. Anyway, one of these years. No, I I think they're fine. I think uh, this community is willing to keep supporting CIG as long as they can show that they're continuing to make progress. And they do. Hey, Commander Lama. Hello, Lama! Wait, RTT? What's RTT? Real thought trap. Render to texture. Yeah, render there to we texture. go. Okay. Well, render to texture has been in the game for quite a while. It's very crotchy right now. I really like that neither of you got that. Oh, God. It's good. Sorry, I'm dying. Was um, that a spider crotch reference? No. Um, there's a bug in 3.8 where when at one of the landing zones, when you ask for permission to land, you just see the guy's crotch in, the, in your view screen. <laughs> Instead of his head. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like it. Uh, round trip time has decreased and you can spawn in more locations. Which is important. Yeah. Okay. Okay, here we go. Sorry, I had to get that fixed and I did. Hey, the bot works! 
got it fixed. All right. Um, so CIG are doing good. They're having their best year ever. Uh, 3.8 is in PTU. Yeah. Um, open I'm just PTU. open to all. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I, they're probably not going to get it live, which sucks, but. I'm. I wasn't gonna. I'm not gonna try it until it's live. I don't want to fight the bugs, but it really depends if they have anybody coming in Monday and Tuesday or not. They could probably get it live if they do, which I hope they don't. It's it's PTU open to all. Anyone that wants to try it can. That's true. Which that's good enough. I say you've got that done. They need to take their Christmas bloody holidays. Um. But uh, three point eight is is good. It's uh, it's a new planet. It's socks. It's you know what? It's a good patch. Um, what else have we got? Actually, no, we've got some stuff to show off this week. I know. Yes, we Let do. Me... And they did. Um, I, I'm not sure if you guys watched it, but they did a really good. Um, or I enjoyed it anyway. The pillar the, talk. The pillar talk. Yeah, it was good. Um, if you if you look closely, it was actually filmed at um, CitizenCon. Um, I suspect they were like, "Can we actually get all these people back together again before Christmas?" No, no. we're gonna yeah. film it now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see what we got. Oh yeah, the the mole. The mole. 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 I don't know. I don't like it. Good. That means it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. <sighs> it's glorious. What do you not like about it? It's like a little wannabe reclaimer that's not made by Misk. Just own up to it already. It's a Misk ship. It's an Ergo ship. It's misc. The coloring is misc. The angles are misc. The industrialness of it is misc. The colors aren't misc. The reclaimer's black. The ins the the <laughs> the highlight colors. Uh, this thing is bright orange. <laughs> it's totally. It's it like is, traffic it, cone orange. It is yes, but only certain parts are orange. Everything else is like. I really uh, want to kill somebody by mining them to death. <laughs> okay, those rocks fall way too slowly. Uh, lower gravity, man. Ah, true, I suppose. Moon. That's a moon. It's not a moon. Okay, what is it then? It's a Death Star. It's a celestial dwarf. <laughs> it's, a, it's a space station, damn it. It didn't um, look like a space station and it rocks on it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, sorry, I, we're I, a little silly. <laughs> I, I will say, I I definitely need to try mining again one of these it's days really soon. Good. I, well, I haven't tried it since like the patch it first came out in. The the yeah, uh, you should try it again. They they keep making it better with every patch. Yeah, and better and better and better. Different well, mining you can buy, so there's actually some like depth of gameplay there. <clears throat> yeah, I know. I need I need to try it again because yeah, I've I've left it for a while. You know, Bluesy has just asked a really good question. Can you slice through holes with those lasers? I would love to know. I want to uh, try. Eventually, probably, because the lasers that are doing the mining are probably going to be similar if not the exact same as the lasers we'll be using for salvage to cut parts of ships off right Possibly. it's probably it's probably going to take time though but i like that there are i like that there are mining lasers all the way from 1500 uec up to 100,000 uec yeah but that's so much money. you've got range man yeah actually that that brings to mind something that uh commander llama and i were talking about red dead 2 the other day in that like you've got one bag that holds like four things. And then as soon as you upgrade that bag, it holds a hundred. 
and there's no in between. It's like I don't remember that. It's been too long since I played. But, but it's really the, easy to upgrade that bag to. The lack of an in between, the lack of like going from five to twenty to fifty to a hundred, mm-hmm. it sort of loses some of the joy of upgrading like you, things. Right? It's like you went from a fanny pack to like those giant like backpacks, yeah. the huge pack sacks. Exactly. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have so much shit on my back. <laughs> I do hope we can get the mining lasers in other colors eventually. That'd be cool. Just you That know. would be really cool. Yeah. And then we can like Oh wait, is that it? No, that's just um in debug mode. Uh cuz some of them look some of them look kind of like like the the Ghostbusters um beams. Then we could we could act out Ghostbusters in Argos. Or in Prospectors. <laughs> yeah. That'd be awesome. You're welcome, also, Shimmer. I've just given you the greatest idea ever. Yeah. There is... Uh, this is a, an effect they've had for a long time, but the, the effect that they have where the rock like glows from the inside when you're injecting energy into that's amazing. They did yep. a great job with that. They really <clears> did. <throat> what else we got here? Whenever I'm mining, I want to take screenshots because it's pretty. <laughs> Anytime I play the damn game, I want to take screenshots because it's pretty. Is this this is just a uh, a rundown of? This is a rundown of all the stuff that they showed this year. It slow it starts slow and gets really fast by the end. I like oh, the man. Facial effect. customization was this year. Yep. Wow. And then they got an entire second version of it. Yeah. And stabbing people in the throat was this year, too. (laughs) It's the slug ship. (laughs) The Asperia Prowler. Another ugly ship. Ah, the mine layer. I love their implementation of mines in this game. I hope it works as well as I think it will. Another ugly ship. Caves. I liked, actually, one of the things that they were talking about in uh, Pillar Talk was how they really wanted to have more caves, but they got, like, 15. But with socks, yeah, they'll be able to put in hundreds. Yeah, they got really constrained by the fact that they were basically up against memory caps for the server. Even for my game, I noticed that I was starting to use, like, I think I got up to 18 gigs of my 32 gigs I was using for Star Citizen. So it, uh, it'll it use all the memory you can kind of feed it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I think it was getting to be really important for them to be able to call down the memory load. Talking of which, I've seen a lot of talk on the uh, Reddit about hardware things. Um, specifically NVMe drives, and Mm -hmm. yes, they will be of a huge benefit to Star Citizen because of the um, large textures that stream in, and that's exactly what NVMe drives are for. Yep. Um, Even on their website now, I think they have recommendations, and they certainly have said before, you know, just kind of don't run this game on a hard drive. (laughs) It's a very bad experience now. It's getting worse. I mean, event- eventually, Star Citizen's going to need all your cores, all your thread, <laughs> all much, your memory. <laughs> um, yeah, all your memory. Th- uh, extremely fast throughput on your drives. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're working on it, and not only that, but you know, like with the transition to Vulcan, Vulcan uses more of your like it, it can access more of your system resort GP resources, but system resources as a whole. Um, so. But if you're thinking yeah. about building a new PC for Star Citizen, don't do it yet because Star Citizen no. is still years away. Wait. Wait until Squadron's about to come out and then do it. Yeah. And I mean actually come out, not like it might be a year from now Some Wait until there's like a legit, it is launching April 16th, 2021. That is, that, is, that is now my prediction okay. for uh, release of 
Squadron, April 16th, I'm gonna say, 2021. I'm going to say November 13th, 2021, because it's my birthday. Yeah, I, I'm saying the 16th because it's my birthday. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Yeah. It's like Cyberpunk. Well, let's all guess our birthdays, and there you go. Well, Cyberpunk is launching on my birthday, so clearly I'm special. Yeah, and apparently you're going to have to take that whole day off and play Cyberpunk. No, I'm probably not going to buy it at launch. Oh, I know. It's sad. I'm gonna get. Uh, you know what? No, I'm. I'm gonna get Dying Light Two instead because I am more interested. Oh in yeah, songs. yeah. You're excited. Well, I, that's totally legit to be more more excited about a different game. Yeah, I will. I will get um, Cyberpunk eventually, but I'm starting with Dying Light Two because uh, I guess because I really liked the first one, and I hated The Witcher. So. Yeah, but you hated The Witcher because you didn't like Geralt. Yes. So, that's a pretty specific. Because Geralt is the most uninteresting character that has ever been invented. So I'm guessing you're not watching the show either. Actually, no, I'm going to watch the show. Um, I had the really, I had the weirdest experience because I, the first thing I saw about the show, and I haven't watched any of it yet because I have agreed with some of my friends that I'm going to watch it with them. So I, I had the weirdest experience. The show came out yesterday, by the way, on. Uh, um, on Netflix, and um, the first thing I read about it was from GameSpot, and they basically said it's total shit, uh, and they gave it a four to ten. And um, then I went, I'm like, oh, that sucks, and I went to IMDb, and it was a nine point three out of ten on IMDb. Yeah, I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> well, I mean, I, well, I, and then I, I went, and then I went, oh, it's a, they're basically a critic, so I can ignore them. I don't like movie or tv critics well i'm yeah. and i'm seeing the exact same thing with uh uh star wars there are some people who are like this is the worst thing ever it's horrible and others are like this is a it's a star wars movie it's lovely yeah you know what i'm just gonna watch it myself um the author of the witcher books is not a fan of the games because he didn't get to make very much money off of He's also No, that's not true. He got he was given a load more money which he wasn't entitled to from CD Project Red. To oh, very up. very very recently though. Like in the last week. Yeah. Um he 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 didn't like the games originally because he didn't get to make much money off of them. It's it was and it like, one of those like he sold the rights ages ago and he, he, he sold, sold the rights it. ages ago for a fixed price. Yeah. <laughs> Just, uh <laughs> <laughs> don't never if you ever create something if you ever create something one get yourself a good agent and two be really 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 certain if you want to sell something for a fixed price because guess what that is a fixed price uh there are plenty of like authors for example who sold the the rights to their novel for uh say a million dollars and then went on to make a lot more than a million dollars in alternative uh like games and movies and tv and and so on and so forth anyway just watch out for that um yes agreed bah, 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 bah. so this part that you're seeing here on the screen right now is actually clips from um pillar talk pillar, pillar talk yeah yeah which um, you sh if if you're interested, you should watch Pillar Talk. It's it's a good one. Mm -hmm. It really is. I've watched it twice actually, because yeah, I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything. Well, also it's uh like four four of the biggest people in Star Citizen development mm -hmm. talking for a half hour. It, just watch it. It's it's Chris and Tony Z and pappy and uh one of the uh, kind of interesting sorry go ahead i can't remember his name bender um see bender yeah um anyway. so one of the things that that sean tracy mentioned that i thought was kind of interesting in uh Sean Tracy, in, sorry, um, I'm getting people mixed yeah. up. I'm tired. Uh, one of the things Sean Tracy said in uh, the article in Newsweek was um, <clears throat> that uh, there, 
you know, they're going to work on, on Surface Side OCS and, you know, finish off the bits of it they need to finish off, but they're not going to, like, optimize the crap out of it because, it, it, in, at least in terms of, sorry, in specific terms, in terms of the number of players they can get into the server, because they don't really get a huge win there. Their huge win for player numbers is going to be server meshing, not making server side OCS better. Um, so they'll get it to a certain point and then they'll focus all their efforts on server meshing, um, which will get them more to the thousands of players rather than hundreds of players realm. <clears throat> At least well, that's the hope. The, I mean, the <laughs> idea behind server meshing is not that it's going to get them to thousands of players in a server. It's that it's going to, st they'll still have like a max of 200 players in a server or whatever, but each the individual will server change size and, will change yeah. size and be in different places shrink shrink down to as as small as it needs to be and if i'm in one room and that room is a server and nakara is in another room and that room is a server and i shoot a bullet through the door between those two rooms the bullet will continue server to server that's the idea behind server meshing that's the importance it means it <laughs> and there's number of engineers out there right now pulling their hair out and throwing it on the floor yes because it's it's <laughs> stupid it's it's like uh, but but i mean the idea behind server meshing <laughs> is literally there is no limit now to the number of people in a server because yeah. there's no such thing as servers anymore in the traditional sense of you are on yeah. one 64 person server it's if now they can actually get it down to having everybody on one universe that's going to be pretty awesome that's it's Sorry, go ahead, Chip. If Jake was if Jake was here, I, I he would get this. But this means that we can have a TR one one six rifle in game for real. <laughs> Is that the rifle from Star Trek? I love got you, it. Eric, and I, I want got your it. babies. I mean, I, I knew it. it was something from Star Trek just because you and him are Star Trek bros. Um, it's a it's a rifle where there's actually like a tiny transporter on the bullet, so it actually transports the bullet. And so you can fire from anywhere to anywhere. <laughs> it's insane. Uh, uh, very Star Trek. That's ridiculous. Yeah, not going to use that in one of my games or anything. Yes, you are. Oh, new uh, to you. All right. Um, anyway, so that's uh, that's where we are now. Mm -hmm. Throw us throw us some questions if y'all would like because uh, we like some questions. Um, we also had um, can I just touch on the roadmap update real quick here? Yeah, do it. Uh, we had one like major change in the roadmap this week, so I figured I would talk about it. Um, they've once again, I'm sure people will be sour about this, but they've once again taken salvage out. Um, and thankfully, they now have a roadmap uh, or uh, a discussion thing where they can actually explain why um so salvage has been removed temporarily and um and some of those some of that is to uh continue mining improvements part, but most of it um is that apparently a lot of that team has been scheduled to work on something for squadron 42 um secondly uh, because the because salvage is removed, the Drake Vulture was removed because it's a salvage ship. Who wants um, to? Yeah. Who does anyone want to bet on why they've uh, taken that salvage team and moved them to the squadron? Because squadron is stuck. Uh, I I also feel like it might be because um, salvage and damage are intricately linked. Very possibly. And you, um, they might and they be trying... Did, sorry, go ahead. They did specifically say... Um, uh, made the decision to have the team scheduled to work on, on salvage shift focus to a number of features that will greatly benefit Squadron 42. So I'm not sure what they're doing, but um, something big, regardless. Uh, also keep in mind, anyone who's like, oh, I'm a salvage... Oh, my content in in the PU. Oh, I'm the angry. Anything that that benefits Squadron benefits the Persistent Universe because they're basically a shared game. So when they come back to us and are like, "Yeah, so we figured out how to um, to cut ships in half for Squadron 
while you're flying them. And like you can take enough damage on a section and it will literally cut in half. And uh, you can like board from that section that's that's turned that's been cut in Don't half. Don't promise like, features. We're not CIG. <laughs> I'm just saying when they come back with something like that, like that. Uh, one, you heard. You know what else? We're gonna give you free blowjobs every time you play the game too. I thought that was already. Um, I'm just saying when they come back with some bullshit like that, that you're like, how did they do this? It's probably because they took a team and had them focus on a feature like that uh, instead of working on salvage because they've got a limited number of devs and uh, I don't know. I don't have any problem with them moving salvage. Um, also, one of the other things I want to note here is um, so January as for, for anybody who's new here or forgot, January is CIG's big uh, kumbaya time. They all come together and they discuss <laughs> what to do for the coming year. So you're probably going to see some big roadmap changes in, in January where they plan out all of 2020. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that usually... And they're not coming... They're not doing another ISC until January 23rd. So... Um, you probably might see some of that stuff then. They'll probably come together early January, figure out what they're doing, and then plan out a plan for ISC for the year, and then we'll start getting some content again. Yep. Uh, the funny thing is, uh, uh, Bluesy0087, they come back in June ready to work. Um, knowing entirely too many of the cig devs and and their habits um they won't go home over the holidays yeah a lot of them they, a lot of them just work like straight through it which is terrible Bad. um but they do it by choice because they want to so um i mean i commend any of them that that do that i also uh, commend any of them that go home and I really hope they do because uh, everyone should uh, should try and take some time off over the <gasps> damn it I have to buy Star Citizen merch what son of a bitch they did it they did have they socks, socks. Sock socks they made sock socks I was I mean, actually I, told, I, I said I was going to buy them if they made them I was there sitting there watching Pillar Talk and they were just, they started talking about socks and I was like it would be a great ad if right now they all just looked at the camera and pulled up their their pants and they were all wearing sock socks. <laughs> that would have been amazing. That's how you sell sock socks. CIG marketing guru, hire me. Um, it's also the <laughs> what they did was they made like normal socks but they're covered in like what I think is probably the code from SSOCS. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah, it's all code. Socks, <laughs> socks. Crytek might sue the socks. Yes. <laughs> um, hey, I tried uh, Crytek's game, Hunt Showdown. It had a free weekend. Was it any good? No. I didn't think so. It was actually really ugly it's and shame. Uh, performed poorly. It is a shame. It was it was a really interesting idea. Shame. <laughs> anyway. Um So, uh ask us some questions cuz uh we like questions. Um in the meantime, cuz we don't have many questions yet. Uh it's the end of the year. Um So right now, with absolutely no preparation so whatsoever, uh, Shiver, what was the favorite thing that CIG did this year? What's the best thing they did? No, you're going to have to come back to me. There's so many. You have five seconds. Five. Socks. Socks? Okay. Nakara, five seconds. Best thing from CIG the, this year. Repeat the question. What is the best thing that CIG did this year? You have five seconds. Jump point to Pyro. Okay. Cool. Um. Everyone else in chat, you have five seconds. Five. Four, three, two, one, zero. Anyone that didn't answer, uh, spiders up your bum hole. So we have server side OCS or, or socks, socks, beanie, 
Uh, object container streaming. That's more broad, so I'm, I'm going to give you that. Okay. I like that. I like that. Um, but. Lando um, went on a vacation. <laughs> and uh, Mole. And Lando went on a vacation. I love Lando. Lando, you're the best. That's all. Yeah. Um, Lando so... scares me, and I love him. I uh, I I'm really sad that I didn't get to to go to C- CitizenCon this year because uh, I love meeting Lando every year, right? every year at CitizenCon and he just picks me up and drags me away and it's uh, it's honestly one of my favorite things uh, is is Lando just kidnapping me and walking away with me so uh, yeah so you're coming next year right yes where is it again next year we don't know yet but pr- either. Oh, actually, it's almost certainly Los Angeles. Like, 95% chance, I'd say. Um, so, I've got a but, question, Yeah, I, I just want to say, I just want to say, uh, from being at CitizenCon this year, it was so good. I had, I have to say, going there, I thought I might not go to the one next year. By the time I got there and experienced it, I was like, yeah, I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's gonna, I'm going to do this again. So, um, so, and also Los Angeles them... is a really cheap flight from Calgary, so I might as well, right? <sighs> what I, I'm gonna have to look into the differences between the Disney parks is what has to okay. happen. Okay, well, you might go to Florida instead. <laughs> well, I I want to take I want to take uh, Mac and Cat. Like we want to go to Disney World. Uh, but but and that's a that's a trip yes it is uh, but I, la is I, also I know, far i know a disney world that's extremely close so i can get you a discount to go into japan yeah, you just have to you just have to get to J- J- wait no sorry he's in green screen um a bunker need, under the sea uh <laughs> the problem is they have different attractions right i need to go to the one that has yes. the harry potter one so that's, oh, that's florida I'm, I'm florida i'm stuck Nicola with florida here. They have everything they have there. Harry Potter here. Yeah. So we, we, what you're saying is that we need to take uh, a journey to Kennedy Space Center and then go see Hogwarts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know it's it's Universal, not Disney, but it's in the same place, isn't it? Uh, more or less, I think. Yeah. Same same, same place. <laughs> Oh, is it? Is oh. Anyway, I got to look into it because I want to, if I have to risk travel to the United States, I only want to do it once. And also I want to drive. I thought you wanted to take the train. It's changed already. Uh, the train is really expensive and takes a long time. And driving... That's what we told you last time. And you're like, we're doing it. I'm going to drive. <laughs> I'm going to drive. Fair enough. And it's like, it's like a two week drive um it's it's like three solid days of driving yeah like which i can do in three days well sure if you don't have children with you which you will (laughs) (laughs) they will lose their minds yes Um, anyway um uh, I, i you know I think the funding the funding bears through, but I think this has been a really really good year for Star Citizen. Um, the Persistent Universe is starting to become a bit more of a game. They've they've added more mission variety, more mission givers, more locations. It's sort of expanded a bit. They've added persistence, which is huge. It's it's slowly showing a lot more promise of of really of what we all backed for, which is great. Um, and I think that the funding really, really bears through on that. It, the funding, the funding follows the game development. And this was a really good year for star citizen. I, um, I personally think that next year is going to be even better. Um, probably. I, I think, think they're going to hit. hit this is the funding bear. The funding bear. Hi, the funding, bear. funding bear. He's cute. He's got beans. Um, I I really think that next year is going to be. Uh, I don't think like 
I think next year is not going to have, you know, a launch of Squadron or a launch of anything, but I think there's going to be marked improvement. I think, yeah, we'll get jump points and pyro. And honestly, in my opinion, probably one of the most important things for Star Citizen, which is going to be the, uh, the Battle Citizen 1942. Yeah, totally. Um, I, I really I, I think that's huge for Star Citizen. I really think that that's possibly the most important thing that's coming next year. And it's coming early next year is a game mode that shows people this is a game. It's a game mode that you can just play the game. Right? That is that is huge. I'm really, really excited that they're doing that. Uh I don't I don't agree with the title of it. Theaters of War is crap. It's it's Battle Citizen twenty one forty two. Theaters of War is crap. It's crap. Sean, Tra- Sean Tracy would like a word with you. <laughs> Battle <laughs> Citizen twenty one forty two twenty twenty nine forty twenty nine forty nine. Took phone's <laughs> trademark infringement. Yeah. Um, oh, no, man. I I'm I'm excited for next year. I think that this year was. Uh, I think last year was not great. The year before was terrible. This year was a really good step in the right direction. Um, yeah, twenty seventeen was rough. Twenty seventeen <laughs> was very rough, but uh, and it's the first. It was the first year that it actually reflected in the funding. It funding yeah. went down that year. Yeah, but uh, yeah, are you guys. What what do you think about next year, Shiver? <sighs> There's going to be the inevitable fallout because. You know, the, another the, fallout squadron. I hope oh, so. No, they God, need to do a good one. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Really Shiver, asked I, for that. <laughs> yeah, you did. Sorry. Well done. Um, because we know everyone with common sense knows squadron isn't going to hit beta next year. Mm-mm. Go and look at the roadmap and see when beta's hitting. Apparently, according to that, next year. Mm-mm-mm. And that's that's yeah. I I I I know it's not going to happen. You know it's not going to happen. CIG are probably like. It's not going to happen. Just just say, <laughs> it's not going to happen. It might not happen. Something rather than just this ambiguous next year. Yeah, I would kind of like them to, uh, maybe in January, they'll come out and be like, so, Squadron, <laughs> we need to fix their schedule because it's not right anymore. <laughs> I think they need to do that, but I also think they need to do something. Um one one thing that I was actually really, really impressed by this year during the Game Awards actually was the uh, – they had a whole bunch of games that had playable demos that you could download and play on Steam during the two-day – like during the Game Awards, yeah. you could play the demos. I thought that was fantastic. Um, I, I really, really liked the demo for Carrion. I don't know if you guys played it. Looks nope. fantastic. Look it up. A uh, really, really cool looking, just like take on Metroidvania ish, but you're the bad guy. Really, really interesting. Carrion. But I really, really liked the idea of a playable Ooh. demo being tied to. Oh, a, a, I remember that game. Yeah, it's really cool. It looks really, really good. I'm, I'm super, super excited for it. I'm probably going to buy it when it comes out, but being able to play even a 15, 20 minute demo of it was fantastic. And I don't so know if. Would, would you say that you're raving on about Carry On? <sighs> All right. I'll, I'll stop crowing on about it. Um, what was I saying? Carrion. Right. Um, I don't know how they could do it, but I feel like CIG doing something like that, doing some kind of, um, honestly, honestly, what would be great is if they get themselves into any award shows this year, because I know they've, they've done that in the past. They had, uh. They had something in one of the game. Was it one of the game awards or something else? Anyway, during one of those events, if they have any stuff shown off during one of those events for Squadron, because maybe it won't be next year, but 
uh, you know, holiday season next year to show off for 2021 seems reasonable for Squadron. Um, something that might benefit them is actually doing something like that demo of, you know what, download Star Citizen and play Theaters of War for free. Make an account, play Theaters of War for free for a week. A week free of Theaters of War, try it. Anyone I'm can guess- try it. I'm guessing they'll do it. Um, it it would it really lends itself to that. I think. Yeah. I I, uh, I th- have we lost Shiver? I th- no no, no there he is. You were frozen for me for a minute. Yeah. Weird. Anyway, I think that they should. That's that's my thinking. I think they should do something like that next year. I think that would really help bring in new people. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't remember where I was going with any of that. Uh, let's get to some of these questions. Mudfucker asks, uh, <laughs> what are your feelings regarding Squadron 42 progress going backwards? I mean, it's not going backwards, but it's more or less stopped at this point. I don't know why, though. That's the way the cookie crumbles, isn't it? Oh, wow. Now I have to go watch that damn movie. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> Thank you for recognizing it. I was having a discussion recently, and I'm pretty sure that that movie uh, is in the top 10 in... It's it's the number one comedy of all time, but it's also the top 10 car chases, top 10 romance movies, top 10 action movies, top 10 cop movies. Um it's just the top ten of every single movie genre. It's it's the best written screenplay of all time. Sure is taking best clothes off. movie ever. No, uh, Hot Fuzz. Best it's not movie ever made. Movie. Uh, Haramus asks, is there any news on Asteroids 2.0? I'm most excited for Asteroids 2.0. Uh, what, what might come with it and will mining improve with it? Um, that's an interesting question because they actually took it off the roadmap. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know what? I actually want to mention something here because let's not be 100% focused on the roadmap because was Sox on roadmap? No. Oh, I think actually it might have been, but it was only added like very recently. But like um, it was, it was on, and then they took it off, and then yeah, they just added it like like a week or two ago or something like that. Mm-hmm. It, it is on there now. It's on there now, but, but I I think that sometimes things get taken off the roadmap because they're like, okay, we don't know exactly when it's going to come, but then they figure out something like the chicken heads, and they're like, oh yeah, actually the the solution is really simple. We got it done. Right, so mm-hmm. the the roadmap is really good. I'm glad they do it, but it's also impossible to predict. It's like it's like you go over to 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 um no, you know what? You've got a recipe. He's going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. You've got a recipe. You have a recipe for um a chicken Alfredo sauce that you're gonna make from scratch, right? And and the recipe has all these these ingredients and times and everything, but the chicken that you're cooking with is frozen, so you have to adjust all of the the cooking times. So you don't really know exactly how long it's going to take, and you're like, "Sorry, family, I don't know exactly when dinner's going to be, uh, but it's going to be soon, right?" And they're off in the other room and they're watching TV and doing stuff, and you're like making it and you're like oh this didn't take nearly as long as i thought it was going to take it's going to be ready in two minutes hey family can you get can you like like hurry up it's it's time for dinner do you want to you know get ready and get to the table and they're all busy doing other stuff because uh they they didn't anticipate that dinner was going to be ready so soon yeah that's boring right i'm really Um, hungry yeah actually that made me really hungry too i'm not sure why but Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Um, I don't know why you guys deal so, with me. Because we love you. Mm. Um, 
<laughs> so I actually found it. I went looking for it. So this is what happened with procedural asteroids, which is which was the card on the roadmap. What they said was this card has since become fairly legacy as it contained a lot of general subtasks that have since been duplicated into new tasks. The graphics team is still looking to make further progress on this in the new year. However, it, that would be subject to planning in Q1, which is what I was talking about before. Yeah. Um, for these reasons, this card has been temporarily removed from the roadmap while we work out the best way to represent the work that will actually be completed. So that all basically makes sense. They've done part of it, but they didn't do all of it. Some of it's already released. A lot of it's still to come, but they don't know exactly when. Makes That's sense. sort of where they're at. Yeah. Uh, another <clears throat> question from Haramis. We can ship drugs all we want, but we can't uh, take them yet. When do we get steroids 2.0? When can we start using drugs in game? August 4th, 2020. Uh, not until the player status system is more fully implemented. Once they have uh, more of the player yeah. status system and you can actually affect your player status with the things that you take, then we'll start seeing drugs and food. Oh, I actually realized what they meant about the Squadron 42 roadmap going backwards. Yeah, they actually lost. They went down 1% in progress this this week for Q4. Oh, wow. I think that's specifically what they meant. They also Wrong. went down yeah. in pro. They also went down in progress for Q1 2020 as well. That's good. Um, <laughs> um, Stevie Madman asks: Has anyone that went to Sitcon this year received their digital goodies pack? It was supposed to be included. I didn't get one. Uh, who asked the question? Stevie Madman. Stevie Madman. Um. Stevie, maybe ask. Uh, I didn't get one. Did any, any, did either of you get one? Like, did you? I didn't go? haven't checked yet. Um. Hmm. Oh, and these are for, you were asking specifically for people who went. I don't know right, if it yeah. was included. I don't know if it was included with the ticket. I thought that it was a separate purchase. Um. I will look. So Haramis asks: uh, Is the next Citizen Con in America again? It's time for Germany again. Uh, actually, no, I hate to be in the US. I hate to break it to you, Haramis. Uh, it's really time for CIG to acknowledge yeah. the work of Turbulent and hold Citizen Con in Montreal, yes. Canada. Yes, and then I'm, I can stay I'm sorry, with I object. Uh, we we need one here in the mythical city of Atlantis. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. No, seriously, they should. Nothing's coming out. They got nothing to show. They got nothing to show off. They should, you know what? Focus on turbulent. And be like, look, look at all the work that these guys have done. Hold it in Montreal. Damn Montreal, it. Montreal in October is a beautiful, beautiful location. Uh, delay Almost it to it November. Uh, well, no, it's still, it's still beautiful. Um, it's beautiful. It's just like be difficult. Yeah, Get but <laughs> I mean, it's been, it's been. Next year, it'll have been nine years. You think every ninth year they can. They can have a citizen con in Montreal. There's a, there is a problem. What's that? If they have a citizen con in Canada, they're just gonna like forget that there's a citizen con on and be all like, "Is there something we're supposed to do today? Get a chocolate bar." Is it because pot's legal here? Yes. Okay. That would be that would be why. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but if if um, if they a, plan one for never done if they drugs. plan one for Canada, then I could plan a wedding to coincide with the Citizen Con in Canada, so that everyone coming oh, up for Citizen I'm, Con could also come up for a wedding. I'm really sure How that Cass feel would, about you getting Cass married. Would, <laughs> sure, Cass would love getting married at Citizen Con. No, not at Citizen Con. <laughs> Just that same, like, week. No, you have to get married by Chris at Citizen Con. <laughs> you know what? If it was under free... The, under the engines of the Reclaimer model. If it was free, <laughs> I would it do now. it. I now, declare, I now declare you man and wife. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't want Chris to do it. I want Tony Z to do it. That way it'll yes. be done in 4.2 seconds. Or he'll he'll go on for like twenty minutes about the you know pluses and minuses of marriage. Yes. <laughs> um, 
and how it feeds into the global system. <laughs> Hermes on asteroids asks, is that right low orbit station where you get cabs to the ground station come with 3.8? No idea. I haven't been in 3.8. It's a yet. good question, though. It's a good question. I don't know. It is a good question. I do know they have the orbital stations in, though, which is super cool. Um, but I don't, uh, I don't know about the automated uh, uh, transports. I don't think so, but I'm not, I'm not 100 percent sure. I would like that to start. Actually, I'd really like to be able to like park my ship at an orbital station and just leave <clears> it there and take something else down to the ground. Because yeah, getting getting to orbit from ground sucks. It really does. They need to make that faster. They really in need to, some sort Especially of matter transporter would. Yeah, be really not even. Good. They just they, all they need Star is Trek. no. They just need a uh, uh, space elevator. <laughs> it's, but it's close to science fiction. Like as, some sort of <laughs> really fast elevator, so fast that you might say it's a turbo lift. <laughs> that's a really uh, long turbo lift um i did want to mention something that i thought was kind of funny because we brought up the uh, the whole drug uh, drugs in canada thing so i was yesterday i was out uh having out, drugs uh, in canada yeah totally uh no i was dropping driving by the shopping center and you know the whole the whole cannabis thing in canada is not hasn't been around for that long and most of my life there was not it wasn't like that yeah i was driving by the shopping center and there's this huge sign that says nova cannabis <laughs> like huh yep that's weird <laughs> it went from not like that weird just just weird weird it's it went from something that was say. legal but not really talked about to like people having discussions at work about the best cannabis stock to buy and the best cannabis to smoke. <laughs> yeah, no, no one talks about that. No, 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 no. None of us use the stuff. We just oh, no, invest no. it. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I, I thought as soon as you get off the plane that you're greeted by this, you know, quite shady looking moose who's like, you know, you want to buy some drugs? Well, no, because he doesn't have to be shady anymore. No, well, he that used that used to be what it was like. Now he's wearing an RCMP uh, uniform yeah. to be fully Cana fully Canadian, and he's Let me get... handing he's handing out free samples. So to get this straight, right? Th this is a talking moose that's offering you drugs, and yep. that's not shady to you. No, no. Okay. No, that's that's Canada. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I was selling my I was selling my uh, my PS4 recently actually, um, online. Did it have drugs in it? It didn't, but uh, someone was like, "I'll give you five ounces of pot for it." <laughs> yeah, you know why? Because they're growing it themselves, and it's yeah. very cheap. If you grow it yourself, and you have enormous amounts of. <laughs> no, I was like. I'm not even going to respond to that one. One, because I don't smoke pot, and two, because I have no idea how much five ounces of pot is worth. <laughs> It's about five ounces. <laughs> no, that's how much it weighs. Uh, it's Mies, China Shop. Mies. It's about 100 and... No, that can't be right. Never mind. I was trying to work it out in grams, but I, I can't be asked. A steroid of tofu asks, Star Citizen gets more and more into a really believable world when we see AI personnel come to life uh, more than now. Sort of. Yeah. Uh, we also, when we start seeing maintenance AI working, shuttle services unloading and loading of freighters, when are we going to see more of that life? The the shuttle services, the loading and unloading of transport, all that sort of. Uh, uh, right away. Uh, right away, actually, because they they've said basically it works, but the servers have been so screwed that it doesn't like it they get they get uh, caught up and all the npcs start freezing and stuff um server side ocs should fix that to a degree and then the further improvements to that and server meshing will make it better and better and better they were and, actually uh, when ahead. it comes down to the ai um the reason that they need server meshing server ocs client ocs is because it's not just AI. It, 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 it's not just 
here's one dude and this is what he's got to do. It's got all these different files that lead to different things many times over. So one AI character could have potentially hundreds of options available to him. Mm -hmm. Now you've got that. And that's just for one NPC. You multiply that, you know, so it's there's 10 times as many uh, NPCs as players. That fills up your um, resources just doing all that. And, yeah, so the more resources available, the more complex your AI can be. One of the things they yeah. were talking about in this week's Pillar Talk was how right now the servers are running at essentially about 5 to 7 frames a second. Which it said seven to ten. Seven to ten. Sure, sorry. Credit. Okay. But yeah. <laughs> seven to ten frames per second. And they were saying that that's actually why you're seeing things that you might think are bugs, uh, doors not opening, AI being unresponsive. It's not actually because it's not working. It's because the server is slowed down so much to five frame, seven seven frames a second that yeah. it's not reacting fast enough and they were they think they haven't they haven't tested it enough in the real world yet they're going to test and then reevaluate but they think that server-side OCS will allow them to get up to the 30 frames a second server running time that that is their goal and if they yeah. start getting up to that things are going to react more in real time. So you'll hit the doors and they'll open right away. You'll, <laughs> things will actually it. happen when you ask yeah. them to happen. <laughs> I, I just want to add in as well that when they're saying, you know, the server tick is 30 frames per second, that does not mean that your client will be limited to 30. Um, for instance, Battlefield uh, on PC, uh, 128 potential players maximum. The server tick is still at 30, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. usually, unless they've got a really fucking powerful server. But it will not make your client limited to 30 frames a second. Your client will still yep. be independent. It's just That's basically that's, how many... Yeah. Up how many updates the objects in the games get is 30 per second. Um, right now they're getting seven. And the problem I think arises from the fact that it's very likely that they're programming it to work at 30 and they're getting seven. So everything starts to like backlog and then you get like NPCs glitching through floors and being unresponsive and yeah. doors not opening when you ask them to and all that lovely stuff. Um, oh. No, it doesn't, it doesn't limit your clients uh, frames. Um, Which is good. Commander Lama says that your, your client simulation Whoa, sort of hang interpolate. Hang on. Yeah. Hand the yeah. All right, mate. Uh, good luck with that. What? You, 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 we lost your you. computer will not be able to. Someone in chat just said it's dumb excuse because AI should be run client side. You're not gonna have <laughs> all the AI on your client. That's gonna that will kill your fucking system. There is a reason that servers have to run this because you your wanna... your computer's running that game and it's running all the AI at the same time. It's well, just gonna j no. I can't and, do this. And not only that, but how would it synchronize that with all of the other? Uh, that doesn't make any sense. You don't. You don't want clients to be. Uh, you ideally, want your client to be nice and lean to send I, as little information as possible in its packets back to the server. Well, so also the more because as soon as on your client, the bigger the pocket is, the, the bigger the packet that you're sending. The more traffic the server's getting, the more congested it gets. The slower the whole game gets. Also, as soon as you've got clients sending more information, that client information can be messed with by those clients you want to have clients sending as little as possible because that's how people hack right yep they they change the packets that are being received and sent on their end C cig star citizen doesn't want you messing with their ai packets because fuck the client <laughs> who knows who knows what shady shit you're doing I mean, right there's for well you know what you know online. you know what they're doing yeah Trek um, online Rick you can and Morty go into the client you can go into the client on the star trek online thing and you can change uh, the rgb colors of effects and things like that cryptic are technically okay with it but if they wanted to they could ban you for that because you've effectively you've fiddled with the client files which is against their terms of service mm -hmm. yeah of course and in theory you could do the same with star citizen if the right files were on your computer Mm -hmm. But then it's sending this information that you've modified well, to the server, and the server's going to say this is not, this, uh, this doesn't match, this isn't valid. 
people actually used to do that in Star Citizen. You used to be able to trick, you used to be able to edit your own INI files and change mm -hmm. the the number of hard points and the max uh, capacity of those hard points. So people would be able to have, sorry, go ahead, Trevor. Did you know back in the old days of just the hangar module, when you bought one ship, uh, you actually had all the ships in your hangar, but it only yeah. displayed the one you had because it was just easier for them to do it like that. And you, could, there was um, a, a, <coughs> a hack, um, a script that you could run, so it would just make all the ships that were available at the entire time just in your hangar. It was, it was, you know, something like that. It's a cool little thing, but not very. Well, they, good they for used to be able to make game. it. You used to be able to make it so that even in Arena Commander, you'd have, you know, you could have four size four weapons on a Hornet, right? Because you'd change the INI, which was reading from your own client rather than from the server. So, no, you never want anything running from a client. Fuck well, clients. and we can just go back to, for the AI, you literally data can't. Forge now. Yeah. Here's the... You're, you're talking about thousands of NPCs anyway. There's no way you can actually yeah. do that in, on your computer. Unless you have, like, no, something, you can't. Powerful you enough, can't. Something, something powerful enough to be a server. <laughs> but, yeah, no. Anyway. Uh, I mean, te technically, though, in a way, that is a correct assessment. It would be a smarter thing to have the AI on your client in many ways it would save so many problems but at the same time the issues it creates were not worth <laughs> far, it far worse. well yeah. not really because then you also have the problem of okay my client says the ai is here and your client says the ai is over here so now we have the same ai in different locations because we've got two different player clients to talk you can't have that it that's what I was talking about with the synchronization before. Like, there's yeah. no way to sync them up properly. Um, anyway, uh, we do have one more question. We do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Miami Bat asks, what are your thoughts on the prison system as proposed? See, I can ask a question. Thank you, Miami Bat. Thank you. Um, you know what? I've here. I've... I've heard some complaints about the prison system. People saying, oh, this, you know, this will never fly. I've done game design for 40 years. I'm a, I'm a, you know, veteran. And you can never, ever, ever take the player away from the action ever because that absolutely will not stand and no one will do it. Um, I call bullshit. 90% of Star Citizen is taking players away from the action, first off. Um, travel time takes players away from the action, quite frankly. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it, I like it. I like that. It, it, it really is. I mean, do, do you think that they're going for th this atmosphere of feeling dangerous all the time? So when you do get into the action, it feels like this is adrenaline mm -hmm. pumping action that hardly ever happens because most of the time I'm just sat on the loo while my ships can quantum. You know what takes me away from the action in video games is talking to other characters. You know, anytime you're like, I need a mission and you talk to that character and they start going on and on about the mission. No, I want to cut all that out. Just put a map. I, I click on the character, put a map location on my map and I go there and kill stuff. That's all I want in a game. Anything else is taking time away from me killing things, which is all video games are supposed to be. It's me killing things. In fact, I don't even think that there should be a main menu anymore in video games. You boot up the game and you're straight into first person with a gun with a thing in front of you to shoot. And when you finish shooting that thing in front of you, there's another thing behind it to shoot. And when you shoot that thing, there's another thing behind it. In fact, you shouldn't even have to look left or right. Just click. So you want to play Doom? Yeah. Isn't, isn't that the, the original Doom? Is, yeah, the isn't, way, that, not, isn't that the epitome of all video game design? I hate yes. FPS games at this point. I'm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, have I, to, I have to say, I, you did trigger something in my in my memory. Um, Chris actually originally, well, maybe still, did, does not want 
did not want a uh, a menu in Star Citizen. He wanted you to start the game and go directly into your character, which I think would be great actually. But uh, I, I like what Commander Llama is saying in chat of uh, you know more more microtransactions. Every couple of faces that you shoot, it opens up a real money auction house. But I think even better is when that real money auction house opens up. <laughs> You can choose the next faces that you're going to kill. So like three bucks to kill a shiver, 12 bucks to kill a Jake, uh, 50 cents to kill me. And you spend money on the next faces you're going to kill. And then they appear and you shoot them. And that's it. That's the game. Man, I think you have Shiver. a like, I think you have a million dollar idea on your. I am a marketing guru. CIG hire me. And next week, Eris will not be on the podcast as he's going to be working at, Le at Electronic Arts. Yes. I think, I think <laughs> if, if Electronic Arts gets a hold of this, you're hired, man. No one send this to Electronic Arts. <laughs> Someone send this to EA. I, I propose yeah, they I'm start... I'm just thinking, showing my age there, calling it Electronic Arts, aren't I? Fuck. <laughs> well, we have to be a little bit careful because if you call it EA, you might mean Electronic Accent. It's true. Uh, I will be right back. You guys continue. We've got eight minutes left. I'll be right back. What could we do for eight minutes? Hmm. I'll go slip into my Spider-Man outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone so, in chat got nice plans for Christmas? Um, I'm actually going to finish answering Mammy Bat's question because he's a very good point. Um, it never really got answered very well. <laughs> Uh, Shiver, what do you think of the prison system as proposed? It's one of those things that it could be really interesting as long as you're not the sort of person who ends up in prison every fucking game, which is likely me. But then it, it, it adds that bit of personal responsibility onto you as a player to not do something shitty or not, you know, do something shitty, but not get fucking caught. <laughs> It's uh, it'll be interesting. I want to see how it's how they're going to implement it properly first in the game before we can really criticize it because it's one of those things that okay on paper this seems potentially interesting. Mm -hmm. Let's see how it actually plays. That's the you know what I think that's the huge um, advantage that CIG has here with having engaged community is they can build this and put it out there and if people hate it they can just do something else. You know. Um, they have time to test and figure out whether this works. And, you know, they're not going to spend a huge amount of resources on getting the first version out. It's, it's caves built in the room system and a few items and a prison uniform. <laughs> You're basically off to the races. The first prison I, is even automated, so it's not even like you need all the NPCs working, you know. One potential issue is that the system needs to be flawless in its implementation because You're flawless. it is possible. I mean... I wish. It is possible that you get a crime stat right now, as Star Helix said, for no fucking reason. And yep. when the game comes out proper, you don't want to be in this situation where a player has been griefed into this situation where he is now being punished because he was goaded into it or something like that. It needs to be... But then how do you code that? So there is one other thing. I'm not sure if you guys have mentioned it, but... Um... And you probably have. But one thing that will also be really good for prisons is, you know what? There are a lot of lawless motherfuckers like Shiver who just wants to go out and kill people, right? You know it's true. Don't even try and deny it. Um, but, but for a lot of lawless people, some of the really good gameplay might actually be going to a place where there's more lawlessness and then... Yeah. And then getting additional missions from more lawless people that you can only meet in prison and getting contacts that you can only yeah. meet in prison. Prison is not just a restriction on how you play. It can also be a, a door opening to new gameplay opportunities as well. And we shouldn't think of it only as taking game away. It could also be a really good way to add gameplay. Um, hey, there's a dancing baby. There's a dancing cast in the background, yes. With, with. Oh, my. He sliced his cheek open. Did he slice his cheek open? Like, he did. 
He looks so much like Winston Churchill. <laughs> uh, they couldn't name him. That's Winston. Uh, I did actually want to name him Winston, but we have a cat named Winston, so I couldn't. Um, it does look like Winston Churchill. Oh, baby's like, every fucking week you're doing this to me. I hate you. <laughs> this is my Babu. Say hi, Babu. No, I don't think so. <laughs> um, my thoughts on it are basically that I think it's a really interesting direction to go, and I can't wait to see how well it's implemented um, and whether people enjoy it or whether they hate it. Um, but I like that they're actually trying something different and not taking the easy way out in terms of the prison thing. So, yeah. Oh, I want a fucking baby, you bastard. I hate you. <laughs> should have one, then. There are look, laws against just taking them. Look at this guy. Look at him. Look at that cute face and those eyes. <laughs> Wife. <laughs> <laughs> I like the yes, I do very much appreciate that you're both wearing NASA sweaters. Um Right. And he's got a, a spaceship up. on his his one side. Yes, he does. Uh ninety percent of our stuff is is space themed. NASA. That's fantastic. It is uh, this is this is the point in the podcast when I mention that uh NASA just got their biggest budget ever. So thumbs really? up. Really? Yeah. Uh is this the point in the podcast? Is that because of the where... Space Force. <laughs> Uh, no, oh, Space Force is seriously. Space Force is an entirely separate department in of the Department of Defense, so it's actually completely separate from NASA. Oh, is this okay. the part of the it's the been space? Been given a start of forty point three million uh, dollar budget, hasn't it? Isn't um, that more than NASA's budget? Fuck. No, <laughs> NASA gets twenty two billion. Okay, uh, is this the part of the cast where we talk about how big of a failure Boeing is? Uh, no, I don't really want to rag on Boeing that much but oh, it's um, been a bad week for boeing it's been a bad year for boeing given the 737 and everything given that they put they've, in they've had a they've had a horrible year yeah it's it's almost like they they tried to fly planes that didn't fly yeah and also tried to also built a very 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 complex spacecraft and then the clock didn't work um <laughs> come on <laughs> Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad this happened now. <laughs> <laughs> we got one more question that I want to do before we uh, end the relay station for the year. <gasps> Mudfucker asks, "What is your Star Citizen Christmas wish for next year? If you could have any one thing that makes sense come next year, what might?" it be i want to see some answers in chat as well as we ourselves ponder uh tofu says uh asteroids 2.0 that's that's a good one the melissa estrada hour <laughs> every week um i think so you remember the foot placement thing that ivo Herzig showed off yes or, yeah 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 so i think in 2020 we're going to be able to stack player characters on top of each other and they'll like have accurate foot placement. It'd be kind of like gymnastics, you know, yep. and the, and the whole human pyramid thing for cheerleading. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna be able to stack people on top of each other very accurately. And, um, it will be, uh, it will be ec excellent meme generation material. Uh, there's actually some really good, uh, suggestions in chat. <laughs> uh, we've got free shipping on SC merch. Yes. Uh, yes, please. Uh, Theatres of War, which we know is coming, and I cannot be more excited for. Uh, Miami yes. Bat actually said the thing that I want. I uh, I want more information on both science and exploration mechanics. Maybe not seeing them in game, but tell us what they're going to be. How's it going to work? A design document, a inside Star Citizen talking about the plans. Some thing telling us how some part of the game that isn't well, shooting that's... things is going to work can you um 
that's got some great potential though with the release of the carrot they could do a really big immersive yes. event and just right I, oh that would uh, be amazing you know hit, hit. uh magazines in game about the new frontiers and how oh god can yep. you imagine that that's uh, not going to happen though is it um i like tofu's uh, suggestion of weather making it hard to land um where else uh, in game casino push and pull um, mechanics which are on the roadmap for squadron it'd be good to see that yep. stuff in uh bang Stage chow board. bang chow uh space farming and harvesting uh, um, I think that might wait until the endeavor, but I want. Hey, it. here's one for me. Uh, I'm a huge credit for getting weather in for 3.8. Uh, dynamic weather is um, my Christmas. Yeah. Um, Let it snow. VR. Yeah. Seda ball. High level comlink. <laughs> I, I I like uh, Ghost 404's uh, suggestion there of a high level comm link with engineering updates on all game systems, how they're going to function in the current design, what the plans are. Um, but you um, know what? I think I think what it comes down to, at least for me, uh, my Star Citizen wish is going to be the same thing I wish for every year, which is really when it comes to Star Citizen, in my opinion, the only thing that truly matters. Communication. Uh, I want to see the same level or more of communication this year. I want them to update us on on deliverables as soon as they know. If they know that they're not going to make a release date or a release window... Let us know. Just tell us about the game. Continue to keep us updated. The most important aspect of Star Citizen and of its development is the communication. Uh, that's what I want. My my wish list would be uh, communication. So I think we should... Uh, do we think... Uh, I'm going to ask in chat too, and both of you. Do we think we're going to... 3.8, it's going to get to live before uh, Christmas? No. No, three point eight. An outside chance, but no. It'll hit live early next year. Miami Bat says yes twice. Okay. So does Tofu. I think he said ja. <laughs> you got to pronounce it ya 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 <laughs> ya. Stevie says no. <laughs> See, Stevie is a realist. <laughs> it hit open ptu in my opinion that's good enough uh i like that they i'm gonna go play it right after this i like that they continue to not release things to live until they're at least a little more stable and i would like them to continue that trend um ptu should be gone into by all people with some sort of understanding that what you're what you're playing won't work um yeah. But uh hey, uh I do want to say uh thank you to everyone for another year of this madness. Uh thank you all for for watching us every week for an entire year for some god awful reason. Um thank you to uh to Nakara and to Shiver and to Jake and to everyone else who's been on with us this year. It's been uh, a whole lot of fun as it is every year. Um, yeah, just. Uh, and reminder, you. folks, I don't know when this is actually going to happen, but the Argo Mole will go on sale as soon as the, the patch goes live or they decide that it's live enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's going on. It'll be on sale soon, though. Yep. So uh for those thank, who want to pick one up. Thank you everyone for for watching and hanging out. Uh thank you for all being part of this ridiculous ride that is Star Citizen. Uh have a hoppy ha a hoppy holidays everyone. Yes, have a happy holidays. Happy holidays and uh a Mackey Merrymas. Yes. Sounds right. Oh, God. Uh happy new year everybody. Um Merry Christmas. Yeah, Happy thank New you Year. So much. Uh, all the things. We'll be back in the new year with more stuff. Yeah, we'll be, we'll um, be back. Thank you for coming so much. We love you all. And 
yes. psychological help is available. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a heads for up us? for the. <laughs> Not for no, us. We oh, don't we'll get psychological help. Um, we, uh, just a heads up for those space fans out there, um, no more SpaceX launches for the rest of the year, uh, but two in the first week of 2020. So so there's no space Xmas launch? No. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, we'll be back in the new year. We'll probably just be uh, re-watching the CitizenCon stuff that we didn't get a chance to do. Uh, live while we wait for CIG to come back. Uh, mm -hmm. Tune in to Nakara for some some SpaceX launches. Have yep. happy holidays. Have a merry oh, new don't year. Quite yet. Have uh, a, a, oh, we gotta uh, wait something Christmas. Uh, uh, I'm I'm running out of things to say while we wait for whatever it is Shiver is trying to do. Uh, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Um, go drink eggnog and eat turkeyed bologna and uh hello and uh <laughs> we'll we'll see you all in the new year thanks so much for watching um yeah we'll see you around everyone see you in 2020 that's really weird <laughs>